Alrighty, in this video, I'll be going over five database tips to optimize your Notion workflow. As you know, my YouTube channel is called Notion Workflow, and so I thought I'd share five things that I often optimize for friends and family as well as for clients. And so first tip I want to go over are the customization settings that you can access through any individual database entry. We can do that by opening any database entry in any side peak center or full page view. And then we can go to the three dots on the top right corner, click on it, and then we can hover down to customize page. Or what that enables you to do is to customize all pages in the database that you're working with. So when we click on customize page, we can see all the properties that are in the database itself. And what this basically allows us to do is move and sort the order of database properties by clicking and hovering on the properties themselves. And then we can also bulk edit the showing conditions of each property. Almost all properties have three different options in which you can show it, always show, hide when empty, and always hide. For example, the checkbox only has two. And I think an example of when we'd wanna use hide when empty is if you're only gonna use it every so often, and so it's not pertinent to always show is when I would hide when empty and it's still valuable when it is filled, right? So that is helpful to use when something that doesn't come up so often does get filled, it still shows, but only when it's not empty. And so that's, I think, the best way to describe how you'd go about using that. And so if we exit out of that, again, because that was an inline database view, we're on a page which also has those three dots, which you can also customize page but it only customizes the page attributes itself. So that is why it's important to open a database entry and then click on the three dots so you have the ability to customize the showing and hiding features around each property. So while we're at the database table view, I also wanna go over the ability to make bulk edits. Obviously we have the ability to click and drag like so. We have the ability to enter text and then drag it. Specifically in the table view, you have the ability to hover to the top left corner of the database view itself. And as you can see on the screen here, you see the square that appears. And so that is one way in which we can bulk edit. So if we click on it, notice how everything else gets selected. And then it tells you how many you've selected for a numerical count and then shows you the properties in which exist within that current database. Notice how because there's only four properties, all of those properties show. And when you do click on them, it's basically as if you're editing the property itself. And then you also have the ability to edit the actual property settings, like the status here. And then the more properties you have, the less you're also gonna be able to see. So in that case, you would go on these three dots, and then you can manually select what happens with the selected databases. We can delete them, duplicate them. We can copy links to all of them, and then we can also bulk edit properties that are not shown immediately when we bulk edit. We also have the ability to move to, and we can also change the icon sets. So this is unique to the table view. And so just want to throw that out there. Again, if you just wanted to selectively choose things, you could bulk edit and then deselect, and it still sort of functions as that sort of bulk subtracting as well. I think something that I think is also underrated and valuable to optimize your workflow is using automatic properties. And I think a really great example of an automatic property that I think most folks should immediately use is the last edited time property. And the reason why I say that is because it basically is a way for Notion to tell you the last time you've worked on something. And it's automatic once you add it, like we do here. I like to put it at the bottom usually, and it'll tell you right away the current time in which you just made that property. And this is responsive, so anytime you update it, anytime you make modifications, this timestamp will always update. So the reason why I think this is a really valuable property and I'll just show you the other three properties we have, the creation time, the created by, and last edited by. If you're working within a team context, this last edited by might also be really helpful so that you know who last edited what, so on and so forth. Again, I'll just remind you that you can select and view the updates on the page by clicking on that clock icon. So that's also helpful to consider when thinking about automatic properties. That took about five seconds to add this last edited time automatic property. And the reason why I recommend that everybody does this is so that within any database view, 
we can go to sort and we can sort by last edited time. And so if you think about it, I think for most database views, you sort of want to see what you've worked on most recently. And so when we create this automatic property and then add the sort within the view can be a huge game changer because not only are you starting from things you've already worked on, but everything is responsive. So if you work on something that's old, it'll update and it'll basically show at the top because you've most recently worked on it, right? I think the, the default setting of ascending means that it'll show the oldest items first. So if I, let's see, if I add this, right, 643, that shows, that's the most recent one. And so we want to always do sort, last edited time, and then descending. So really helpful. And I think if you think about adding this to all of your views, you might be able to alleviate some of the noise, some of the grouping that you might have. You don't really have to think about where did I leave off or what did I work on last because the view itself will always sort by recency. And so I think if you also think about what you haven't worked on in a long time, what we can quickly do is right click, duplicate it, duplicate the view, and then we can just say I old. Maybe that's kind of confusing for some of you, but we do sort and then we just reverse that process. So now if we look at last edited time, the oldest is 639 and the newest is at the bottom. So the reason why I wanted to show you that was because it took one, two, and then renaming is three, and then four, and then five. Five clicks to basically create two views by recency, sorting by old first and then by new first. And I just want to show you this because I think almost anyone can apply this view sort. Obviously, if you have a sort of specific way that you're organizing it by, it might not make sense. And then the one thing I'll also say is if you try to move it, move databases across or above each other, this notification is going to come up, which says, would you like to remove sorting? Obviously, nothing bad happens when you do remove the sorting, but that is when you want to make sure that a certain entry stays at the top and you're not prioritizing by recency. And so um, that breaks the sort, right? But it takes one, two, and three clicks to create that sort. And so can be immensely valuable. I think the next thing I'll mention are some basic grouping views and configurations that I like to think about. I think I'll create two views. One is going to be a gallery view and one is going to be a board view. And I think both of these are really handy views. The board view automatically has a group that it has to sort of structure by. In this case, it's going to default to status because we have that as a property. Now, if we go to gallery view, there is no default group. So if we were to basically group by the same status category that we saw with the board view, we have the group by status property configuration for both of these views. And the one thing I want to sort of show you is the board view has that horizontal group and the view has that vertical group. And so whether you're, you're creating views to add to a dashboard or if you're working with someone that has a preference in terms of if they prefer to read left to right or top to bottom, I think it's something to think about. And as you can see, it feels a little different with the gallery grouped view. You have those toggles to shrink by, but with the board view, you sort of have no way of doing that. I just want to show you that difference. So if you're working with a board view and you want a more condensed way to group things, I highly recommend the vertical group view of the gallery database view. Hopefully that made sense. And I think the last database tip that I will be sharing with you all is the right click. As simple as it might seem, I just right clicked on a database entry there and look at all the options we have. In some cases, we might have to click on the database, click on the three dots, and then modify or see a menu like this. But in other cases, we can just right click and we have so many actions that we can immediately take to manipulate that database entry, right? And as you can imagine, everything you might want to do is probably located within this menu. I want to encourage everybody to use the right click when it comes to database views and to right click on any database entry that you want to highlight, right? And you can 
bulk select and right click to do even more. I think bulk selecting is extremely powerful when you combine it with a right click in the way that I just did here. And regardless of what view you're using, you have immediate ways to modify said items. And so generally speaking, I think even with blocks, the six dots function similarly to a right click. And you can also use the right click on blocks in the same way you can with database entries. But I do think that's a really strong habit that you can start to develop so that you can take even more shortcuts as you change or modify things for yourself and others. And I think if you combine some of the tips I've shared with you today, you can do a lot more than you think in probably less time than you imagined. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe. Please let me know what sort of video I should make next. Thanks.